Hi everybody. If you want more Draw Me tutorials, then click that like button and don't forget to subscribe. Hi everybody. Welcome to another Draw With Me Kids Edition episode. What episode are we on right now? 19. 19. So today... Even though it, it uh, the title says 1. Did I forget to put the 9 in? Yes! Oh no! <laughs> I'll um, go fix that later, don't worry. Um, today we'll be doing... Animal Crossing! Animal Crossing. So we heard from a lot of you guys that you like the game Animal Crossing New Horizons. And it's not a game that we actually have played here uh, ourselves. But I have played Animal Crossing. The original, which might come in handy a little bit later. And um, what we're going to do is uh, teach you guys how to do the style of Animal Crossing characters that you can use as your own to create your own characters or your own visitors to your island in New Horizon based off of whatever animal or creature or fantasy character you want, or even do your own person, right? So, what do we need to do? We need your... to show. Oh yeah, we're gonna show off the pictures from last time. But what do we need to get ready? We need our paper, our pencils, and your erasers, and let's go. <laughs> Guys? Gonna do a little bit of a switch up here. Surprise! I'm doing the digital today! <laughs> She's taking over my role here, guys, so here she goes. This is my mom's picture. Beautiful picture of a tree and a field with a trail. Because what did we do last week? We did trees and landscapes. We did trees and landscapes. So that's my pine tree and that's my landscape. Now, didn't go to the one I wanted to. This is to talk about. Oh, you want me to talk about it? Because I actually know a little bit about what uh, what we're seeing here, which is cool. Which is, I am assuming a uh, fanfic t uh, story. Uh, based off of Underhill, Undertale, rather, and this is Dreamtale. And this artist did an awesome job of depicting the Tree of Feelings, which has sort of a really cool dichotomy to it, dark side and the light side. So uh, what we're showing here is the artist did it with our, our usual thing in uh, traditional media, uh, pencil crayons and and pencil and whatnot, and then redid it in a digital format, which is what why Sophia wants to do, Miss Rainbow wants to do digital today. She's inspired to do some digital. So that's a cool one. What's the next one? <laughs> that we got turned in. Oh, da, da, da. I think this you can is talk mine. about this. One. Yeah, sure is. This is my mushroom forest tree from the Indigo Jungle. It has shroom fruit. And this one has been written and the juice is coming out. Then over here is my scene uh, called Builder's Cabin. What's special about Builder's Cabin? This is actually built in Minecraft. Yeah, this is one of her Minecraft worlds. Cool. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off with the basis of drawing a body and a head in Animal Crossing style, which you guys should be all prepared for if you've watched our episode back on Mother's Day for portraits and our follow-up. Um, if uh, a follow-up with um, bodies and hands and all that kind of stuff. Thanks, Sophia. She's being the comment monitor today. Um, and so you should have sort of the basics for how to do a body, but with Animal Crossing, one of the cool things is they're sort of a little bit disproportioned. So if you guys know what ami amoebas, or amoebas, <laughs> amiibos are, or, uh, Miis from, uh, a Nintendo Wii, or Wii U, or DS, 
They're a little bit like that. So what we start out with on your character, and it doesn't matter if you're doing an animal or a person character, is a really big, almost rounded oval, like we always start with, for the head. This is going to be harder for Sophia, I think, than I'm used to. And then you want to draw a body, which is a little bit sort of the same width as your head for how long it is, but its width itself is actually skinnier. So you'd have those two sort of shapes. Because, um, and yeah, Sophia's doing a kidney bean shaped. You can do it that way too. I tend to do more of a kidney bean shape too. Um, and that's because a, an Animal Crossing character has a bigger head than they do the rest of their body. Another cool thing about them, so I'm going to do mine doing, like you see in this picture a bit, with your hands up in the air going, yay! But you can choose whatever pose you want to do. So if you want to do one that's holding their hands in front of them, or if you want to do one that is jumping, or doing a peace sign, which actually is hard for an for Animal Crossing character. Here's why. Do you want to know why it's really hard for them? Because their hands are just round circles. Kind of like uh, if you're going to make them hold anything or do anything, think of a Lego figure. So they'd have round hands, and if you wanted to hold something, they would have sort of a, a cup as their fingers overlapping stuff. So when they fish or when they are trading things and have something in their hand, that's what they look like. Okay. And Crayola erasable, <laughs> um, pencil crayons aren't erasable. That's fine. So I'm just doing regular balled up hands for those, this guy. And then you draw long, my character is going to be standing up nice and straight. So I'm drawing two, three straight lines for the legs. And if you want to draw your character jumping, you might want to have, like, I'll do a lighter version, you know, jumping legs out, like they're doing jumping jacks, whatever pose you want to do. And this is the fun part today. If you have something that you want to learn how to draw for your character, let me know and I will draw it for you. Leave it in the comments below, okay? And you can learn how to do it. So feet are semicircles, just like this. I'm not at my finger. I'm oh. making my character holding something. That's okay. And then a line underneath for those semicircles. We'll get Sophia caught up, not to worry. And so this is kind of the base. You can go super crazy on your base. Oh yeah, I gotta connect the neck here. My neck. And you can kind of go add whatever else you want to this character. One of the cool things about um, Animal Crossing and how detailed you want to go. Some of my younger artists, this is going to be enough. Some of my older artists, you can start adding some cool details too if you want. You can too if you're younger, but I don't want you to get frustrated. One of the things you might have remembered is I like to draw a little line to help me find the center of my face. I'm going to use blue to do that. Okay. That makes it easier to erase so you know what to erase in digital. And then you sort of find where you're going to put your eyes. So amiibo, or not amiibo, I'm sorry, we're doing Animal Crossing characters. Your eyes would be on that middle line. So everything is very um, exaggerated in these characters. For the eyes, you can choose a couple of, of eye shapes. You can do a semicircle, and you can add uh, eyelashes if you want. That's a typical one. You can do just a plain old circle, which I think I'm going to do today. And then you can sort of add the iris. Or uh, you can even get really fancy with your Animal Crossing characters. You start with a circle, and then you add a sort of flat top for the eye lash or the corner. 
and add an, an echo on the bottom for the corner of the eye so you can get that kind of neat cat eye shape. So there's a couple ways you can do your eyes for your Animal Crossing character. And if you want a cat animal based Animal Crossing character and not a human one, there's a few of my different types of eyes you can have, you can start to decide, well, if I'm doing a cat one, maybe I want more cat-like eyes. Or if I'm doing Tom Nook, he's got more of just a, a dot in the middle of his eye there because he's got his raccoon circles around them. So I'm going to go plain old oval. And I'm going to do my character looking like this. And then the nose also has a lot of options. So if you're doing an animal character, like a dog or a cat or a raccoon or a panda, animals normally have what we call muzzles. So I'm going to make mine show you muzzles. So you do a circle or just like that or an oval just like that to represent the muzzle of the character and you draw like a little nose at the top. So if you're making a bear creature or something like that you can do it that way. If you're doing your own, so I'll do that on this side here. So you do a muzzle, which is just an oval and you can choose either an oval or a triangle and then usually mouth like that. Or we'll get to mouth choices in a second. If you're doing a human character based off of yourself, aren't Sophia's eyes cool for hers? I like them too. Those are really neat. For the noses, you can pick in your human character a triangle nose like this. This is usually what you see in a human character a rectangle nose or a little roly-poly button nose like that. I think there's a couple other choices but those are the main ones. So if you like to have a unique nose, I'm gonna go with the triangle nose for my human here. If you saw my preview nose, um, I did a rectangle for my preview that I did on my web page, on the Facebook page. And now mouths in Animal Crossing char characters, if you're an animal, you can sort of do, certainly do a typical semi-circle mouth like that. If you're an animal character like a cat or a bear or a rabbit or something, you could do this to give it that added. This is my cat. Sophia's already done that for her cat. So if you see her, she's got that little W shape. You could do that with your human character, too. It sort of gives them that impression where they're <laughs> up to something. I like to use this, though. Just a big old circle. You can op have an open mouth like this, which I think I'm going to do. And then I just put a little round tongue shape in there so you can just sort of see inside the mouth. And you just see inside enough to see the tongue. So there's my main character for the body so far. It looks like you can sort of see all the elements I've put into that so far. But since we know, as I've just said, hmm, the eraser doesn't really erase the pencil crayon. <laughs> so if you've made guidelines, now's a good time to erase those guidelines if you haven't done it already. If you're doing an animal and you want to do different ears, some of the ears you could do is simply doing like little bumps on there for a rabbit. You can do little triangles for cats. You can do whatever you'd like for that character. For humans, you just do sort of a half circle. Just like that. Can you start the trivia? Well, I'm going to start the trivia very soon. This is the part where you guys get, and Sophia's already started. She's got a fishing rod, I think. Fishing rod, fishing rod and a fishy. Her cat is fishing for their own stuff. This is where you guys can go off the map and make it your very own character. You don't have to copy mine at all. So this particular character, you could add things like sometimes 
characters like to have band-aids on their face, so I'm going to put a band-aid over their nose like they had an accident. And I'm going to put little freckles on here because I feel like it. This is where you get to personalize your character. And I think this guy, because it's a guy, you can choose your own hairstyle. I'm going to do sort of somewhat spiky hair for this guy just because you can. And it kind of goes with those ears I've already started. You could add some bangs on your character if you wanted to have bangs on your characters. I don't think this guy has bangs. You can choose whatever color you want. In for my older artists, if you want to do things like add sort of more of a cheek to it, you can change the lines a bit. It's harder to do when I can't erase today. Oh no. That's okay. Sort of give uh, more cheek to it. It's okay because it's, it's quite dark now. We we managed with the other though. Yep, yeah, that's okay. I'm all right. I'm having fun. This is a chance for you guys to see me do it the way that you guys probably do it too, which is fun. Um, and then I want to put this guy in a striped shirt, t-shirt. And if I could erase it, I'd erase all of these overlapping lines that aren't working for it anymore. Like where his neck is and here too, but I'll use that with color. And then you can dress them anyway, which is the cool thing about Animal Crossing New Horizons I like that I've read about. I haven't played it yet. So you can start creating fashion designs if that's sort of some of the thing you like to do on your island. You can create um, your own indoor space. So this guy is going to be a happy face t-shirt guy. Have a nice day, happy face t-shirt guy. We better give him some pants. <laughs> he has no pants. So I'm going to give him long rolled up jeans because that would be fun. I might make them just a little bit wider than his legs. I would follow right there along the, the edge of the body to give him uh, where his legs meet. Then you can decide on shoes and what color you want. So you just make this character, and you can add other characters and their environment any which way you want. And let's start with the trivia while you're working on some of those elements. And I'm coloring. Are you ready? I get to do trivia today! Yay! I'm in the trivia seat! <laughs> so if you were listening to my intro or to our intro, we might have given this away. But how many different Animal Crossing games are there? You guys are probably familiar with Animal Crossing New Horizons. But how many Animal Crossing games are there? Two? Three? Four? Or five? And maybe I'll, I'll change my uh, question there and say how many main Animal Crossing games are there? Two? Three? Four? Or five? It's okay to take a guess, too, if you're not familiar with Animal Crossing in the same way as, like, we aren't very familiar with it. It's definitely a game I think would be fun. Two. Okay, two. We have a two. We have a two. Yep. Okay, two. I think this guy likes pink. I don't know. My cat likes pink. Oh, cool. I'm give him green eyes. So, the actual answer is five games. There are five titles in the Animal Crossing series. Animal Crossing, which came out as Animal Forest in Japan. 
Yeah. Are you on the right thing? Yeah. Hmm. Well, I'll help you out in just a second. Uh, Animal Can Crossing, Wild World, Animal Crossing City Folk, Animal Crossing New Leaf, and Animal Crossing New Horizons, which just came out. And there's also five or uh, three special mini game oh, events that came out happened. too. Were you not on your thing anymore? Oh, I see what happened. Yeah, just click X. There you go. It was waiting for you to make answer a question and not the trivia question. <laughs> so yeah, there are five different ones, and then there were three mini ones that came out too in between. When did Animal Crossing first come out? Are you guys ready? Did it come out in 1987? Did it come out in 1992? Did it come out in 2001? Or did it come out in 2011? And if you're going by my age, guys, I still play video games. So it could be any of those. It could be really old or it could be really new. I would still play it. I mean, I play Minecraft for crying out loud. <laughs> So again, that's 87, 1987, 1992, 2001, or 2011. Those are your choices. I'm going to give this guy carrot hair. So we'll just click down at the plus sign down there. There you go. So any guesses? skin. Now I might go back to this one I worked over here on and change her up. Somebody's cutting the grass outside, so you can probably hear it. Mm. So I, since we don't have any guesses, I hope you're not all too afraid to make a guess. But I'll give you the answer. The answer is it came out in 2001. Animal Crossing was re first released as Animal Forest in Japan, and then later as Animal Crossing in the rest of the world. It came out for a system known as the Nintendo 64. Or the N64. Oh, she got a little skirt on? Mm -hmm. So cute. Oh, I like it. All right, next question. This is a bit of a bizarre one. So if you know the game, <laughs> if you know the game, you New Horizons, it. you'll probably get this. But there's a character in the game with the last name Nook, and he's been in this game since the beginning. And they've just recently released a few more in the Nook family, I guess. They're not really family members, are they? They are his apprentices, but they have the same last name. So, in New Horizon, which one of the following is not the name of one of the Nooks? Tom, Timmy, Tammy or Tommy? Oh, you can see the answers. T -h -h -h. Can give him a darker nose there. Oh. 
nothing. This guy is wearing pink, but he's going to have uh, cherry red shoes. You do you. I like this guy already. Oh, I think that maybe we do have answers and Sophia doesn't know how to do this part. Ah oh, ha ha, there we go. So we did have some guesses. Yeah, that was five not including the side games. Sorry we missed your comment there, Emily, but yes, five not including the side games. There's eight total, and I knew Emily would know that. 2001, 2001, both of you guys got that. So this time around, the question is, is it Tom, Timmy, Tommy, or Tammy that is not a member of the Nook group? Oh, see, I'm like, I know that Emily's a huge fan of Animal Crossing, much like another couple of our artists who wanted to do this today. I would, I would go with, um, I would go with the commenter Laura, that's Emily. I would go with her. She knows what she's saying. Because <laughs> the correct answer is indeed... Tammy is not one of the names. Tammy is the yellow bear. Uh, <laughs> but the other ones are Tom, who has been an original Animal Crossing character since the beginning, and his two apprentices, who were not his sons, are Tommy and Timmy. So they help with the real estate in the shop. So that's kind of cool. I'm going to swap these over. So this is my first one that I did with you guys. This is the one I did as practice just to warm up to see. I'm going to finish it off so you can see it. And the final question that we have, which, again, if you don't know Animal Crossing, uh, somebody is going to know this in the comments for sure. Even Sophia actually took a guess at this when I asked her and she hasn't played Animal Crossing and she got it. How many different types of bugs and fish can you catch in New Horizons? And I'm looking for the number that is each. 50 each, 70 types each, 80 types each, or 100 types each. So don't add them together to get like 100, 140, all that. This is 50, 70, 80, or 100. How many different types can you catch? Sophia is learning how tough it is to draw and make really detailed pictures and manage the comments and she's finding that really hard. Ah, we've got a really good guess of 50. 50 each. I'm doing this pretty easy, simple. Maybe I'll go back to doing combo here. So I can have my main. Method here of. Sketching it on paper. And I can erase. I'm just going to check to see if I need to scroll. I'm going to need to lift up. And nope, I don't think we need to scroll. The answer is there are 80 types of bugs and 80 types of fish that you can catch in New Horizons. We are not doing this as a promo because, you know, we're not affiliated with Nintendo. We just know you guys love these kind of games. And if you are a Robo Roblox fan, 
the basis of this character or how to draw these characters you can use to draw roblox characters as well because they're similarly portion proportioned the heads are usually a little smaller than the uh characters in animal crossing but they still have a weird sort of proportion to them and see when i'm drawing and i'm getting into it i turn my page around pro tip yeah, I do that too all the time. I do it without even noticing I'm doing it sometimes. I'm going to give that eyebrow cheek that I like to do. I had a really cool one sent to me uh, in my comments, if you guys look through the comments to my page, of somebody's own character they drew, and it was really awesome. It's a pencil sketch she did. I was like, that's cool. I really liked it. Well, I think this one's going to be much more flowery, and she's not an animal. Again, I didn't do an animal character. Maybe I need to do a good... Um, yeah, so that's like 160 different things that you can catch just in bugs and fish alone animal crossing is a little bit like for my minecraft players a little bit like minecraft it's a resource gathering uh building stuff but there's um you know trading and and uh whatnot but it's not blocky graphics it's very uh stylized kawaii kind of characters which i never say right <laughs> Which is just basically me saying cute. A little disproportionate. The characters that emphasize the eyes and the head and the face and everything else is sort of cute and miniature. If, you're, if you normally look at a human on how they're proportioned this isn't quite right, but that's okay. You recognize the forms and the shapes, and you know what it is just by looking at it. And that's kind of the cool thing about doing cartoon art and drawing art is if you can get the main shapes and the basis down, people figure out what it is from your art stuff. So if you're drawing your very own Animal Crossing character, or visitor, animal or otherwise, is there anything that you would like to draw for them or for their environment that you need some help with? Right now is a good time in the comments to ask me and I'll see if I can help. Oh, is this one of your Siamese cats that you have? I don't have any Siamese cats. Oh, but you want to get one. Mini OC. Mm -hmm. I want an ice cream cone. Actually, I make it just a little louder and a little poofy there. If you look at her tail, it's a fishing rod. It's her tail. Fishing rod is her tail. Cool. I'm going to scroll here for a second. <laughs> oh, I'm causing chaos. I'm stretching it. Okay, you can go back. I'm causing chaos in Sophia's screen. Um, and maybe this character is going to have wearing a little bikini, flowery bikini top thingy, like a tankini, because I like tankinis. Tankini! One thing that when you're remembering to put clothes on your character, I always try to draw the body shape first. 
You're drawing Sophia's Animal Crossing character. That's awesome. I can't wait to see what how you've drawn your Animal Crossing or her Animal Crossing character. I'm gonna give her water shoes because I would wear water shoes. I hate getting my feet on clams at her cottage. She's got water shoes and she's enjoying herself. So I was gonna say when you're putting clothing on your character, I always try to draw the approximate shape of the body type that you've got underneath and then I follow those lines a little bit looser because the fabric wouldn't be clinging so really tight to your body unless that's the style of the character you're drawing and this can be for Animal Crossing this can be for whatever else you're making so I wanted this to be a little bit loose and you want to think about how that fabric or that piece of clothing is going to wrap around the shapes that you've created. So Sophia's done a really neat job on the waistband of her skirt, for example, for Siamini. And she's made just like I've done here for the waistband of my swimsuit. It sort of curves in the same line as the bottom of that shape that I did for her body to give that impression of it sitting on her shape. Because if you did it the other way, if you did it like this, then it sort of changes the perspective of what you're seeing the character from. It just sort of helps, so it makes you think about where are the lines gonna end up and does it make it look like clothes? It's not an easy thing to do and it takes some practice. And I would have big old flowers on this character. I'm making super happy characters, but you can do whatever you feel like doing on your characters. Maybe your characters are dark and mysterious. Maybe your characters are funny. Maybe your characters are sad. I always try to reflect a little bit of what's going on in my day and some of my emotions. I'm making polka dot. Polka dot bikini. Bottom. I didn't make the armhole big enough, but that's okay. So one of the things uh, about Animal Crossing characters, if you're going to keep them in an Animal Crossing style, is remembering there is not a lot of detail on hands. The heads are really big and the eyes are really big. And that gives them that sort of, you know, really awesome, really cartoony, somewhat uh, kawaii, if I'm saying that right. I can spell it right, but I can't say it right. Um, cute, super cute look to them. And then it'll sort of always, you'll sort of go, oh yeah, is that an Animal Crossing character? That's sort of one way to really... And a lot of people I find have this style of their own anyway. There's a lot of people who have a very cute, um, as children's book illustrators, if you've read a lot of books, uh, have this really cute way of doing kids where kids are usually have big heads and smaller bodies which is sort of an exaggeration of how you draw really young kids or maybe draw yourself All right, I'm gonna give you guys a couple guesses of what kind of ice cream I would be eating if this were me oh, as a I character. Know, I know. You don't get to guess, you know. I know two types that you would like. You don't get to guess, you know. <laughs> you live with me, that's not fair. <laughs> and if you guys don't wanna guess what maybe I'll be doing, eating, you can tell me what you'd be eating. Just sort of say, I would be eating this, or you can say, or or uh, Sam, I and Christina, I think you'd be eating this. I can tell you, or actually maybe we'll let Miss Rainbows tell you what her favorite one is. 
Um, if you were to make this your ice cream cone, what would you make it, Miss Rainbows? Vanilla. Would you put anything on it? Sprinkles and chocolate chips. It's vanilla. But vanilla. But it's vanilla. You like plain old vanilla ice cream. Now what are you doing? Are you doing another character? What are you doing? Doing my background. Oh, you're doing a background. Cool. On the background layer. Very smart. Well, maybe I'll give her a background, being on the beach, running in the beach. You want to look at the comments? Mint chocolate chip. <gasps> Mint chocolate chip. I would be eating something with chocolate and peanut butter or caramel or all of the above. I think you've hit on pretty much all of the flavors that I like so far. These are really good guesses. I know. Mint chocolate chip. Um, Mint chocolate chip. And chocolate. Mint chocolate chip is one of my two favorite flavors, though. I will say and that. And chocolate. Come on. You didn't let anybody guess. Yep. Mint chocolate chip and plain old chocolate are two of my favorites. Are my two favorites, I should say. Not two of my favorites. They are my favorites. I also like bubble gum. I'm going to say that. I do like bubble gum. What? Yep. Bubble gum flavored ice cream. So it feels like, whoa, you're not my mom. Get out of town. <laughs> you never told me this about yourself. I'm, I'm erasing, and I'm on the eraser, but it's not white. Uh, that's because your background color is not set to white. Hold on a second. Let me assist you with this. You could erase with white. But white? Coloring. Why is my background color not set to white? Because I was doing a commission on there before and didn't switch up to the colors. Lucky guess. <laughs> I don't know, was that Michael's lucky guess or was that Mom's my lucky guess? Because I think Mom would have known it. She might have seen me eat it before. <laughs> but it was Michael's lucky guess. <laughs> Awesome lucky guess, Michael. I gotta tell you, I'm feeling badly that I've made you work with these pencil crowns, Sophie. They kind of hurt. <laughs> I don't really like them. They work extremely well for me. Oh, okay. I'm spoiled. I mean, they're good. They're, I'm, they're fine. Palm trees. <laughs> if they if they actually look like palm trees. Oh. It is good practice. That's right. Because I I actually if I'm not coloring um on my computer to do work for people, um I am often using either acrylic or paint or watercolors. And sometimes I'll use my handy dandy chameleon pens, which Sophia has been using most of the draw with me sessions. So it's always nice to go back and try different colors, try different things and remind yourself of what everything is. And we thought we'd have a little fun with this swap today because uh, Emily really inspired Sophia to try and do something digitally. And uh, not to say she's never used the digital, right, Miss Rainbows? You've used it a couple times. I think my, one of my favorite I pictures don't... you drew for me was uh, Hello Neighbor. You drew the neighbor for me. No, I can't draw my background. I want my background to be this color. I want it to be this color. Okay. Wait a minute. It's going down. I, I can't color it over. Watch. And now see, it appears there, but it's not on my screen. 
because my background color is set to white. Ooh, but I want to be able to color it, but I don't want it. Mm, yeah, the bamboo swing bow was taken from. The bamboo swing draw. Yeah, the bamboo swing bow was computer drawn. Sophia uh, um, illustrated. Can't look next. Oh, I see what's happening. Okay, this one. Sorry, I'm helping technical problems. There's Sophia. There, now you've got a transparent background. Hold on. We'll clip her there. And then we'll just... Whoop, 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 down. Boop, boop. Okay, you should be able to go. Make sure you got your background layer selected. You are on and you're not background layer. Sit. Well, that was my background. your new background layer. I made a new your new background layer. But yes, the Bamboozling Bow is a book that Sophia wrote um, with uh, Ottawa author, children's book author, Tim Holmes, who does, uh, does a uh, start a story workshop with the Ottawa Public Library as well as his own online course through Patreon. He's at Tim Writes on Facebook, Tim, T-I-M-M-W-R-I-T-E-S. And she wrote that story using his Start a Story workshop that he had for free. And I think he still has those videos up on his Facebook page. Um, and she did the course on Facebook and she's now doing one um, using his week his monthly prompt right yeah and uh, she wrote the stories and she wrote she wrote the words for it and then she wrote did the pictures for it so she did all those digital um, so if you have heard of the bamboozling bow and have watched the video that was done digitally and then I helped her do the layout using one of my programs so it's sort of like one of the summer camp thing activities that she's doing throughout the summer is to write her next story using the start a story workshop prompts and uh, I'm probably gonna illustrate it too right Di yeah. Digital. So it's basically the the workshop is to write a children's book for young readers, and, and for young readers, I mean like something like a Robert Munch book or uh, you know a picture book that you would write. Uh, he has a formula of 12 pages, approximately 12 pages, and how many oopses and, and adventures that you do, and it all kind of works out as a really cool story in the end. And I work on children's books with authors and do their pictures for them, and it's really kind of neat to see it all kind of made into an easy, accessible course for kids to try. Because a lot of the authors that I work with have very similar kind of formulas for their books. It's kind of cool. So I hope everybody is having fun doing their backgrounds and their characters and I can't wait to see what they're like. We're so glad you could join us uh, Emily from wherever you're watching today and anybody who's watching later we hope to see if you can send in your pictures to Sam I Ann Art S A M I A N N E Art A R T on Facebook if you're watching this on YouTube I don't know, do they have a direct messenger on YouTube? I'm going to have to look that out. Guess what? I'm going to do chocolate mint. It's going to look a little pistachio because I don't have a true minty color here. That's okay. 
and the chocolate chips. Um, yeah, you can send it in uh, if you can get um, direct messenger on Facebook or on YouTube. How do you change the opacity? We're getting really complex here. Uh, you can change the opacity at the top of your pen. So you just use that little slider and pull it down. There you go. Well, darker topics are good to explore too because we don't always have, you know, we're not always super happy uh, all the time. And sometimes having a darker story to sort of learn about how to deal with problems or just even because it feels good to write dark stories sometimes too. I have my own writing stuff that I have and I, I have some dark stories that I like to write. Doing art and doing writing is a good way to sort of sort through what's in your brain. And sometimes your brain is not like mint chocolate chip ice cream. <laughs> Part of the challenge of being an artist where you're um, doing artwork for other people and not getting to do it for yourself all the time is having to learn to do what the client wants and be happy and cheery when sometimes you want to just do a big old dragon that's uh, flying through the sky and looking formidable. So always make time to do those things that make you happy. <laughs> happy endings have their place, but so do some dark ones too, eh? Oh, I'm, I'm invading Sophia. It's me again, invading Sophia. It's me again. This is really cool. Well done, Sophia. This is my back um, layer of my sky. Yuppers. I'm looking at the screen and watching. This is my palm trees. Sweet. And my little bit of water and sand. This is the moon and the colors of sky, moon, and sand. Yeah. And this is my free sketch one. Sweet. Well done, Sophia. I love her sun hat. I just saw her sun hat. Wow. With a flower on it. Kind of reminds me of somebody I know who has a sun hat very similar. You can see me pointing in the camera. So thank you very much guys for joining us today to do some Animal Crossing based cartoon characters and I hope that you can make them into whatever type of narrative or story that you want to do whether it's happy adventures that you're having with your family this summer if you're going on trips to cottages or just exploring around your hometown because maybe you're not going too far this summer we got pictures coming in we got a picture coming in oh i can't wait to see it next week we'll show everybody next week we won't show it right now <laughs> look at me it's me who's taking up all the time on drawing the rest i will leave that right there this I'll finish her later. It's her little flower sun hat. That's her flower sun hat. Her blue eyes. She's a Siamese cat. Mm-hmm. And from her nuzzle, her mouth, she has a fish. This is not a, oh, I forgot to do the eye in the fish. So we got Roblox as an option for next week. Okay, we'll do Roblox next week. So I don't know if we've used one of Michael's uh, suggestions for Roblox. It's going to be very similar to this week, but, but uh, I'll show you the differences and how you can sort of change some of these shapes to make your own characters and do your own thing. Do you want to do a little bit of an outro here? Let me show everybody your stuff. Wait, no. There you go. All right. Cool. Okay, well, we're going to swap over. Come on over to me. I am looking at that. Here you go. Come on over.
thanks guys for watching today and doing some animal crossing with us so roblox i like that suggestion we're going to put it on our um thank you thing for next week right yeah okay so we'll do roblox characters next week and sort of show you some of the differences of how doing a basic shape of face uh, for an Animal Crossing character can turn into something more like Roblox. Um, we hope you guys have a fun time this week, whatever and wherever you are. And if you're watching on YouTube or on Facebook later, don't forget you can still send us your stuff too. Uh, and we would love to see it. And even if you see that we've already posted it, no problem. So have a great day. And uh, you say you're uh, goodbye. Bye. I'll see you next time. See you next week. On episode, me, episode 20. Bye. Oh my gosh, episode 20. Bye.